Hello everybody, how you doing today? My name's Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, or not. You might know me as that person on Twitter who's always sharing weird goth memes and podcasts and music. I talk a lot about music. I'm not going to be doing that today though. <laughs> today, I, it's Fiction Friday, and as usual, I want to kind of talk about what's been going on with my fiction and my writing and all that jazz. And since I'm kind of floating around in a circle here of doing nano prep for Sanctify My Sins, which I'm going to be writing, and I'm currently working on Stone of Heaven, my thoughts naturally revolve around how can I redesign the website so that it's a better way for people to get into the setting and discover some of the really interesting elements that are in it that I don't really see in a lot of other fiction so that maybe people realize they might want to read the book. Yeah, I know. I'm just that kind of a person. And it's it's not the most... I'm not going to say it's not the most productive use of my time, because honestly, I sit around and talk to my imaginary friends all day and write down their stories of what happened to them while they were either in college or that time they almost died on an airship. But um, (laughs) productivity is an illusion, especially when you're a fiction writer. Um... And yeah, we can talk about word count and stuff like that, but that that's not where I'm at right now. Um, yeah, I've been spending a lot of time really thinking about how to share the story and share the world and how not to overly burden readers with it, but make it available for readers who are interested in it. And this is something that is... I, I've been kind of... Like Stone of Heaven was a book that was supposed to be written earlier this year, And I have been working on it all year because I keep doing this round robin on the first couple chapters. And it's not that I don't know what the story is about. It's not that I don't know where the story is going. It's about how to how to capture some of the ideas that are present in the story world that are necessary for a reader to understand for the story to make sense in a way that initially wasn't overly sadistic because that's the problem that the original version of the story had is it, it, it was heading down a very S&M scary place. I mean, yeah. I mean, I love my Mord Sith as much as anybody, but oh, that, that, no, no, that's probably not the way that I wanted to go with the story. Let me back up, try something a little bit different. And I don't even know what version I'm on of this now, but recently I realized that, oh, there's this whole thing that is really undercut here, and oh, wow, all the characters are being such jerks to each other, and oh, how did this suddenly become the world of Grimdark? Because I don't know how I got there. Well, I do. (laughs) Hi, my name's Charlie. I suffer from depression and dysphoria, and apparently I I gave a bad case of that to my writing. Oh, oh, okay. So that that wasn't a good thing. And so I've been kind of rotating around and spinning around in these first couple chapters there, um, mainly because there, there are some core concepts in this story that have to be understood by the audience or the story itself doesn't make sense. This is the heart problem that all fantasy fiction has and where... A lot of fantasy fiction falls apart for me is the author, and I'm so guilty of this myself, don't think I'm ever pointing this out to anyone else, is either so light on details because they don't want to overburden people with details that some people have a hard time following the story or become overly cumbersome with details and... Yeah. I mean, that's the problem with my Liquid Sky books, at least from what I hear from other people, is that the lore necessary to understand the book is, it's dripped out, but it's in such a constant drip that the book's a bit, this book and the series is 
a whole is a little bit overwhelming for people, and so I kind of pulled back, and there wasn't a lot of lore that people needed to know for Shine, like Thunder, so that book worked well. And I had quite a bit that I thought people needed to know for the chain, and uh, I, I put in what I thought was enough, and then, of course, started reading comments about, well, if this was only explained, and I'm like, but I did, I did chapter one, like, if, you, if the author would have only explained how magic works, that's like all of chapter one and two of the book is actually explaining through use how the, at least I thought it was. So, yeah, this is a struggle that I go through. And it's like my great panic with Crucify My Love. And, you know, as I'm heading towards Sanctify, kind of a concern there as well. Because through each of these books, we're getting a wider and wider view of the world and starting to see how the world itself functions. And especially how the magic in this world works. And some of that definitely belongs in the books themselves but it needs to be done in a way that's fun and interesting and i am judging judging by my own interests how i think that's going and luckily these books are up on wattpad so i can look and see what chapters people are reading what chapters people are finishing and you know get some good analytics there to get an idea of what's working and what's not even when people don't leave comments but you know it's a lot and it's even more stuff that like one of the characters is from a country named danu and there's so much about danu that i know and that i want to talk about but it's not important to the story and so i want to build a part of the website that talks about it so that it can be out there for the world and this is why writing is hard this is why fantasy writing is hard this is why it took tolkien 20 years to write the lord of the rings or something like that because you, you just keep spinning in a circle because the more you learn about the world the more fascinated you become by it especially if it's a, ser a story in a setting that you as the writer really really love and i can only imagine what the lord of the rings would have looked like if the internet had existed because it's because he started work on it so late it's possible that he would have worked on it in obscurity and then eventually tried to publish the work or he might have tried to do it publicly somehow and shared drafts of the Silmarillion as it was written. I, I, I can't speak for Tolkien directly, but, and I'm not trying to compare myself to him, though the comparison is inevitable if you are a fantasy writer. Like, I see a lot of Tolkien's habits in me, and I see a lot of um, Terry Brooks' habits in me as well, and David Eddings, some of that as well, and yeah... And so it's all about trying to control these impulses. Because what's most important is that the reader, and this is very important as a writer to remember this, and I almost feel like I should say, as an aside there, so much more important if you're a filmmaker to understand this. It doesn't matter how much you're grooving on your story. If there's no access entry point, re readers won't come in. And that's a really tricky thing to do as a writer. Especially in the modern world, because the way modern fi modern fiction is so disposable, and that really worries me. That really upsets me in a lot of ways, because there's a part of me that wants to get into that churn, because I could hunker down and just write some formulaic stories over and over and over again and churn out a whole bunch of books and eventually make money from doing that and i see a lot of writers who are doing that and some are creating really really great books doing that and others really should be slowing down um <laughs> i'm not naming names but that's kind of what's necessary in the medium right now is to be able to craft out fiction quicker and that's something that i've been trying to develop over the last couple of years as a method whereby i can get books out quicker and unfold those stories and tell those stories in a way that's not disposable because i don't want to throw away my stories as fast as they're written and i know that sounds harsh and for a lot of people who are kind of on the grind of getting a book out every three months every three to four months that may sound cold 
and you know like I'm throwing you under the bus or something and that's not my intent at all it's just I've met this is the other thing that happens when you're a writer and you go to events at all you start meeting other writers and I've met too many writers who don't give a crap about the fiction that they're writing because it's just words on a page that let them make a living I've met writers who really love what they're doing and who are also working at a crazy pace because they love it I am not equating those two things but Lately, I've met way too many writers who have basically learned how to slog through and just mint a new book at a very rapid fire pace so that they can make a steady income without really caring about what they're doing. And that upsets to the core. Because what I'm trying to do is develop a world and build a setting and tell stories that mean something to me. And when I go looking around for writing advice, very often it's geared towards the type of person who's willing to churn out books at a crazy pace and allow the quality of their fiction to be what it is rather than strive to try to make it something better. And that's not something that I'm willing to do. And this isn't like a manifesto moment. This isn't like me standing up and being like, you know, damn the man, save the empire. That's not where I'm wanting to go. But I have desperately been trying to capture a vision for this world in a way that I can communicate it with other people. And that I found very difficult because, for example, I was talking with a friend of mine a couple months ago. And they asked what genre I was writing in. And there are several answers that I can give to that question. And there's one I never give that is actually the what I feel like the right answer. And that is, I'm writing rock fiction. Rock to hard rock with a touch of metal. That That's what I'm writing. And that feels like the right answer to me. Not, you know, whether it's kind of a hyper fantasy Americanized, you know, Jiansha or whether it's a, you know, epic fantasy with Wuxia elements or any of those other things that I could say to me, the right answer, you know, I'm writing in the genre of black Sabbath meets Led Zeppelin with some heart on top. I am writing rock fiction and that may sound weird to you, but a lot of the notions that go into the fiction that I'm writing are inspired by these sources, you know, that in my head, what I'm writing is I'm writing a world that would live right beside Sylvan Song by Hart or Kashmir by Led Zeppelin or Children of the Sea by Black Sabbath or something that you would see a Within Temptation album about. And there, there is this odd musicality and lyrical quality that I've been trying to capture in prose to give that the proper attitude to the characters and to the world that is very hard to do. Mainly because I, I don't know of any other examples of it. Because I'm not writing a rock opera. I'm not writing music at all. Though for each book series that I'm working on, I actually did write a theme song for. And so I have that to actually listen to as part of the inspiration when I'm trying to get into the groove to write. How do you unfold a song into prose? What does, a sto- what, what, what does the story of Children of the Sea look like as a novel? Or The Immigrant Song? Or, you know... Her Black Wings by Danzig, or, you know, I, I could just list songs, you know, What About Us, you know, Within Temptation and Tarya Tarunin, you know, the, the, there, there is a spirit to the characters, the characterization, and the magical worlds that you see in that kind of heavy metal fiction. And I think that's why, like, I think of about it that way, because, you know, growing up, that's the kind of thing that I watched in the games that I played. Because to me, like Final Fantasy games fit into that realm because, you know, you have that kind of think about the music that gets made for something like Advent's Children, right? It's a Final Fantasy VII movie and it's basically, you know, metal music. 
because how else do you capture the spirit of those characters and the spirit of that world other than through driving rock and metal music you know i don't know it's it's a, this is why i don't talk about it but i i, I wanted to give it a try on this podcast mainly because i've gotten some good feedback from you all about this and maybe you know something that you know a resource that would help make this a thing because as with many of the things that i talk about in this podcast on this podcast you know it's not always about finding the answers it's about presenting the question because i think there's a certain rebellious spirit there that goes along with it like there's a difference in feeling that i'm going for in this you know it is much more that kind of rock hard rock like i want you to see these characters with guitar sounds beneath them and pounding drums in the action scene i don't know it, it's a weird way to think about fiction and it's one of the things that makes my fiction difficult for me to explain to others especially when a lot of my other influences that are outside of you know like the imagery that you would see in lyrics like what i was referring to is like the works of robert e howard and you know yeah yeah various japanese sources and chinese sources it, it is a strange world and so that's kind of the state of my own fiction is trying to figure out how to <laughs> hello kitty my uh, that's never happened while i've been recording before if you could hear that my uh, cat decided to come in here and demand attention for a minute so i had to pause and uh, show her proper devotion as you know a cat owner must do <laughs> okay so but you know th this is i think an something that i've really benefited like the few times that i have talked about this with other writers it's something that they've gotten and they kind of understand where i'm coming from a little bit and it's made for some fairly productive discussion because you know i don't primarily see myself as somebody who's writing fantasy fiction or writing you know dark fantasy or epic fantasy or sword and sorcery or any of those genres you know the the f type of stories that i'm telling or you know stevie nicks would have written a song about it and those influences are as strong on my idea of character and setting as a lot of the you know novelists and filmmakers that have also inspired me and game designers and what have you it's an it's a it's a very different way to conceive of story and it's one of the things that's made it tricky and a bit interesting to try to figure out how to tell the story properly in a way that has the darker undertones that i'm wanting it to have while still having kind of a fun element element to it you know i don't want everything to be darkness and despair i'm not wanting to write grimdark and that's always been like my biggest concern with the more gothic elements of my fiction and i mean that both in terms of like gothic music and in terms of like i love i love gothic so yeah have you ever thought about your fiction in those ways do you have a weird analogy that you use to think about your writing process? It, again, like me, it's not something that I talk about. Like usually when I talk about my books, I just say they're epic fantasy or they're sword and sorcery or like with a uh, labyrinth, you know, it's, ma it's a magic school. People can rock that a lot easier and I don't have to deal with a lot of the baggage because <laughs> we're trying to unpack some of the other things that I could say. Like, it's, it's kind of a Shen Sha story, but very much from kind of a Celtic American point of view. People don't have no idea what that means. And I don't, ex I don't expect them to. So I'm curious, do you have a weird way that you look at your own writing? Please let me know. You can hit me up on social media. You can find links to everything that I do over at projectshadow.com. If you download the Anchor app and follow me over there, you can send in a one-minute clip that I can use on the show. That would be awesome. Um, or you can ask a question, or you can answer my question. Or you can just make a statement about something that you want me to talk about in a future episode. That would be fun. If the app that you're listening to me on allows you to rate the episode or the series, please do that. That does help out quite a bit. If you know somebody that you think would like this show, please share. That helps out a lot, too um if you can support financially the things the work that i'm doing um take a look in the show notes and you'll see a support on anchor you'll see a support on anchor link 
If you click that, you'll be able to support what I'm doing at the $1, $5, or $10 levels. I have no say over those, but any financial support that you can give me does help out a lot because got to make money somehow. If you want to support my fiction, you can go over to Patreon. It's patreon.com slash CE Dorset. Again, links to all this at projectshadow.com and uh, you can support over there. I'm thinking of completely rejiggering the uh, um, reward tiers over there. So if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, let me know because I've been given that a lot of. So this is a weird episode. I hope you liked it. It's it's a topic that I don't know how to talk about, and I want to learn how to talk about it. And so I give it a try. So there it was. So until next time, remember, have the fun. Bye.